So, you are an ant keeper and want to make a cavern for Macarium like this one. Or, you really want to know how to build a water tower into your ant farms. Whichever might be the case, stay tuned, because today we'll unveil the mystery surrounding the water tower. Right after the new shorter intro. Hello and welcome to another Ants Vienna video everyone! If you are new here, on this channel we cover everything you need to know if you want to keep ants as pets. Today I welcome you to another video of our build tutorial series and our subject will be how you can make one of these ant farms yourself. As always, you can find a full list of the products I use in the description of the video below, along with Amazon links. So, without further ado, let us jump right into the action! First up, I will be using an udong block for the cavern part, namely the nesting space of this formicaria. You may also know udong as AAC, aerated concrete, or Hebel. If you don't have access to Udong, you can use Firestone, also called Fire Brick, instead. Members of our Ants Vienna Discord server have told me this worked well for them as it has very similar properties to Udong. You may want to join us there for more sneak peeks, behind the scenes, or even giveaways. Back to our build now. For the top part, You'll need a clear view acrylic box of your choice. I'll be using this smaller box for our little setup and a bigger box you all should have access to for the larger variant. It comes with the Ferrero Rocher pralines, which everyone should have heard of. And the first tool I want to introduce you to is this waterproof digital measure. Aside from being able to turn it on and off and setting it to zero, you can switch between millimeters and inches. On the one side you can measure the outer and on the other the inner diameter of things. It came in a nice box with the instructions, screwdriver and even a spare battery. Ok, so Let's use it to measure the size of the boxes I'll be using. Since we now know the dimensions of our boxes, we will proceed marking the udong with a pencil and a conventional meter accordingly. Just remember to always cut your blocks somewhat bigger in case something goes wrong. You can sand it down to size anytime later. For the cutting, I'll be using an old udong saw. There you go, that's our first block. Now, I'll repeat that process for our bigger and firm design. See, that's the reason why you should always be generous with your marks. The very next thing I do is to give the cut udong blocks a nice sanding with sandpaper and a holder tool. All these dust particles are the reason I am always wearing protective glasses and a filter mask. This will be our water tower. In case you haven't seen this before, it's the remains of a party light candle. I'll go ahead and measure this too while providing you a link to candles with transparent cover in the description below, so you can easily replicate what I'm doing. To carve out the hole for our water tower, I will be using this 40mm Forstner drill bit along with my trusted drill machine. Now we'll start drilling. Then 
This is how your blog should look like after you're done. Your water tower should fit in nicely. Let us draw the front now so we have a vague idea how this is going to look like. The same of course goes for my larger setup, although this will have a different design on its back. This round mark in the middle is the area we can clear for the chambers, or the single chamber in my case. You can carve your udong or fire brick with an old screwdriver, a chisel or the drill. For the sake of this video, I'll be using the screwdriver for the small one and the other tools for the larger setup. Go in and slowly tilt the screwdriver towards the inside. Continue like this until you reach the other side or start the other side too and reach the middle. In parallel, I'm drilling four holes on the edges of my setup for the magnets that will hold the front plexiglass panel in place. And I finally got through here. Now I'll widen it a bit more. This is the result I got using my screwdriver. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to share it with other ant enthusiasts so it can help them out too. Now it's time to drill the passage to the outworld and an entrance to the formicarium itself. For access to the water tower from the outside, I will be using this rather small drill bit and work my way through by hand. Since I am making two nests, I will be repeating the whole process for the other one, except for the fact that I'm doing it with the drill this time around. That formicarium is also getting an extra experimental gimmick. I hope you guys can follow my explanations so far. Let me know in the comments below. Ok, this is how far I've got with the drill. The rest is going to be chisel work. Let us now have a closer look at how far I've come with this ant farm using my chisel. If you like my work, be kind enough to leave this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out, as these build tutorials take a lot of time and effort to produce. For our next step, we have to clear the udong block from all the dust. For this, you can use an old, no longer needed, makeup brush from your mom or girlfriend. After we've gotten rid of all the dust, we can finally start painting our nest. I love giving my nests bright, vibrant colors. Make sure you use acrylic 
non-toxic paint for this, so you don't harm your little pet ant colony moving in. Now I've washed my paintbrush and we'll continue working our way around the other nest. Okay, so this is how the nesting chambers of our setups turned out. What do you think of the color combinations? Which one is your favorite? I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I didn't like the red sand brown combination. So this one went in for a change. And there you go. Much, much better in my opinion. For our next step, we have to cut some tubing down to size for the connections. This should do the job. The wider for a larger red and the thinner for the yellow setup plus a very thin one for the gimmick we'll be installing. Now we have to start working on the ants outwards, meaning the foraging area on top where you can feed them. Mark the point where you need to drill with a permanent marker. This goes both for the bottoms and the tops of your setup. The bottom hole is for the passage to the nesting space, while the top hole will be for ventilation, since we don't want our ant colonies to suffocate. And the best way to drill through acrylic, in my experience, are those step drill bits. I'll link you this set I'm using from TacLife that came in that case in the video's description below. I will also be using a sacrificial wood piece for convenience. To hold the acrylic down on it. This is how everything should look like after we are done with the drilling. Let's put all the pieces together for now. If you don't want to decorate the outward of your water tower and farm, you can save some time here. But everyone who knows me knows that I'm all in for decorations. I bought a few of these decorative plants from Amazon a long time ago. To hold them in place, we'll need a glue gun. Put some glue on your decoration and then flip it into your outward where you want to have it. This is my plan for the outward of our bigger cavern for Macarium. Now, while our glue gun is still hot, I will proceed gluing the magnets in right away. I am using this piece of metal as an extension, since the glue is really hot and the magnet will get hot too. And this is how the setups look with the magnets installed. To finish the decoration of the ant's foraging area, I will use plaster casting powder in combination with some aquarium gravel. To mix the plaster powder, you will need some kind of box or bucket and a spatula. Make sure you always add plaster to water, not the other way around. Now I'll go ahead and pour our mixture into the outward of our setups. Shake it up slightly so it reaches all the corners. Don't forget to add the gravel while the plaster mix is still soft. After so much effort you would think we are done, but truth is we still have to cut the steel mesh for our water tower 
and the tops of our setups. And the easiest way to do this is to turn one of the future water tanks over and draw its footprint with a marker. Now I will cut it out with a pair of scissors. Time to put our glue gun to use again to fix the mesh on the top of our setup and to create the water tower. Since the plaster of our decorated outward has now hardened, I measure our etong block again so I can start working on the hobby glass covers and the bottom plates. You can cut the hobby glass with an iron saw, but I need to save some time. So I will be using this Proxon hobby saw. Link in the description of the video as always. Let's get our gadget up and running here. Now I will proceed cutting everything and return to you when I am finished. Ok, I am now done cutting and sanding all the plates that we need for our ant farms. To assemble all the pieces together, I will be using transparent aquarium silicon filled in a small syringe for better control on application. Now let us insert the water tower in the opening and fill the space around it with silicon. So you prevent your ants from escaping and hold the water tower in place. The next step is to glue the back glass on and the only tip I can give you here is it's better to use more silicone than less just to make sure you have no openings. Like I've mentioned before I want my ant farm setups to feature bottom plates and these need to be glued on as well. For our small yellow setup I'm using a hobby color plate and for the large one I'm using a wooden plate. Just apply silicone on the bottom of your setup and glue them together with your plate. Now we need to let everything dry out overnight. Now a new day has come and this is the day where I put the front plates of our setups on and show you the result of my hard work. I decided to go with magnets on front so I can later take the lid off and clean the ant farm in preparation for a new colony moving in. Since a formicarium like this takes a lot of time and effort to make, I want to give them some longevity or quality of life improvements as some would say. So let us stick those magnets on. Since the sun has now come out, we will move outside. Here is the smaller yellow design. Followed by its larger peer, the Ants Vienna Red. Overall, I am very pleased how these two ant farms turned out. Just find a fitting box as an outworld and start creating, guys. An easy option you can go with are the IKEA Godmorgan sets. They have both small 
and big boxes, plus you don't need to even drill a hole in the top because it's already there. You may notice that my red design has a small acrylic test tube on the upper part of its back. That is a water tank designed to deliver water in this second water tower variation with the recessed mesh. This is where the ants can drink from. In case you guys didn't know, the purpose of the regular water tower like the one in our yellow cavern and farm is mainly to provide a stable humidity level within the setup and not to be over flood and provide your ants with water to drink since over flooding it will cause mold to break out in the long run so which ant farm do you like most is it red or yellow or is it even the green or blue one I made some time ago? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was enjoyable and helpful to you, leave it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Have fun watching my other build tutorials too and subscribe so you don't miss our next video.